guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have a great one for you today, the Thrash Metal Classic War Ensemble by Slayer. We're going to take a look at this thing note for note, all the way through the whole track, through the solos, through all the riffs. Um, so get your uh, picking hands ready, because this one hurts. It's, there's a lot going on. All right, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video, and uh, check out my Guitar Academy. Right now, I'm offering a free seven-day trial. You'll see the link in the description um, to my Guitar Academy, which contains all my guitar courses covering everything from, uh, you know, guitar tone to technique to improvisation, ear training, theory, uh, all sorts of stuff. So please go check it out. There's a free seven-day trial um, that you can do right now. All right, so let's jump into it. We are in E flat tuning. Um, so every string is down uh, a half step um, on the guitar so we can follow along with the actual recording. Um, and we've, like I said before, we've got some serious thrash metal riffs going on here. So make sure you are warmed up. All right, so we're gonna start with this main riff here. So what's going on? That's like, well, first of all, you can got it. You're just pretty much doing straight sixteenth notes in the in the picking hand, and he does a quick pull off from three to one, and then when you get to the zero, you're back with the the um, the uh, picking, the sixteenth note pickings. So kind of. So we have that. So do that a few times. And then jump up here and grab the power cord of the 6th fret off the low E string. Then the 5th fret. So we have this. And then back to that riff before. And then after just doing it a couple times, we have this. stuff man so we have open E string then the third fret on the low E this is pretty heavily palm muted too so we have this low E then the third fret on the low E then we're gonna play 2 1 on the A string and then the open E again then 3 2 1 on the low E All together. Repeat. All right, so now we have, that's, you know, live at least, Carrie King plays that part, and then um, the little chord hits underneath it are done uh, by Jeff Hanneman. So we have this, this is what he's doing. And then it goes into, so it just starts with the G power chord off the, the third fret there, then six, five, then back to the uh, third fret. And then it kind of pauses, and then it does another, another six five there, and then he just joins it with the rip. All right, from there we have the chorus rip. Now this is kind of an abbreviated version of the chorus rip. Um, it's eighty percent of the chorus rip. Anyway, it sounds like this. All right, so open low E string there. I'm gonna call it low. I know it's an E flat, but you know we're not gonna bother with that. So open low E, open E power chord. Then play the power chord off the third fret of the low E down to two. So let's go zero, three, two. Then four, three. 
And then at 7, 6, you get that 6 twice with this. So. So here, I, here I'm hitting the low E between them. Get it. And then we basically do the same thing, except we move the power chords, um, except that we had the first power chords the same, and the low hit, hit as well. But now the power chords just move them the same frets, but move them over to the A string. So, and, and when you're hitting that hit in between, it's still on the low E string, so like this. Then we pretty much start over again. But the second time through here, when you move the chords over to the A string power chords, you're gonna move basically the first four power chords up a fret each. So instead of going three, two, four, three, we start at four, three this time and go four, three, five, four, then the same seven, six to end it. So it looks like this. So that's just the second time around those power chords that happen on the um, A string. So all together for that riff, Fret higher, except for the last two. All right, so that is part of the chorus. There's uh, there's a little beginning to the chorus that they, they don't play the very first time you hear that riff. So um, that's kind of the last 80% of the chorus riff. All right, then we get to the verse, all right? So the verse riff, uh, very quick stuff, looks like this. So you basically want to keep that 16th note or root muted hits kind of alternate picking on the low E string as much as you can. And you're kind of doing this pedal underneath it. So you're just kind of holding that note and playing this. So. Which is just the third fret on the A string. Then a six, five, four. When you see them play a live, they do it a lot looser. Like, Kind of just going, not really trying to get it as like machine gun like. All right, so that is um, going to tire you out a little bit. And then it goes from this riff, it goes back to the main riff. So it kind of just has that little ending. It just goes back to the main riff a couple times. And it shows us. Basically hit an open E power chord seven times. So that's when you go back into that main riff again real quick for a couple times, right out of that verse. Then we go back to the same verse riff again. Another little thing. All right, so you go back into that, and then um, out of that, we go into the chorus. 
Now this time it's the full chorus riff. All right, so that's what I mean. You probably saw that little intro that I did to it. So we had this, we have this, basically we start with the same, the same first half of the riff that the chorus riff that we did earlier. And then you go back down to a low E power chord and kind of chug on it for a bit. It's all downstrokes there. Then you do that again. And then you start chugging on that E again, but I'm like halfway through of playing on that low E. Move it up to this E power chord at the seventh position. So that's the seventh row on the A, ninth on the D, uh, and nine on the G. Kind of open it up a little bit. So that beginning of that chorus now. Now from here, we play the riff that we did earlier, the chorus riff at the beginning of song. All right, so that, um, so both of those together now actually make up the, the real chorus to the song. So from now on, when you hear that riff, you're gonna hear that, that kind of opening part now to the chorus. All right, so now we have the uh, Jeff Henneman's solo. Um, before we get into that, we're gonna take a look at the rhythm guitar parts underneath the solo real quick. So let me play th through those real quick for you, and then I'll show you how to play them. So that's uh, kind of just quick uh, 16th note picking again of the F sharp power chord here of the second fret of the low E. And then quickly go up to five, then to three. Then back to five, back down to two. So we have this. Then back to five. That five is always kind of just a little quick little passing chord. And then three, one. So we have this. And then repeat. Last time you hear it played, it just goes does this. Hit that three once, then the one once. So we have this. So now let me take a look at him and solo real quick. Um, this solo is gonna have little parts in it that are, you know, kind of a lot of whammy bar stuff that's not gonna be the most recreatable thing in the world. Um, but I will do my best, so here we go. All right, so now we start here with a bend here at the third fret with a pinch harmonic on the G string. So uh, you should bend up, 
catch it with the pinch harmonic there. And then you hear it without it. And then he does this kind of just kind of a symmetrical line. So um, it's just kind of, he does like two, three, and then up to five, three, two on the G. And that five, three, two is a pattern that he sticks with. He does it again twice on the D string. So just five, three, two descending. And then again on the A. And then I think once on the low E. So when it gets down here to the low E, it gets really kind of uh, jarbled sounding. Jarbled. I don't, that's probably not even a word. But we have. And it sounds like it ends on this note, at least. So on the way back up, I'm thinking it's probably probably just an A minor scale, it sounds like. But it's like I said, that part, you cannot really hear it. It's so heavily palm muted. It sounds like he ends up there. I know he ends up there, but how he gets there exactly, it's kind of hard to pick up because it's so muted and low in the mix. So what I'm doing, when I get down here, I shift up to the fifth fret here and play an A minor scale, A natural minor. So just play five, seven, eight, heavily palm muted on the low E, then five, seven, eight on the A. 5-7 on the uh, D string. That's what it is. Alright, so that's about the best because, like I said, the bottom of that run is really hard to pick up. Um, from there, we go into a bend at the, you can do it at the 10th fret. At, at the 10th fret there on the B string. And he does some whammy bar at the top of the bend, and then he'll go back down to that third fret on the G string. And then do some whammy bar stuff on that too, kind of pulling up the bar. And then the open G string, a little bar dive in there. That's the way it is. Okay. And then he goes back into kind of the same like he did before. So it's kind of the same thing. And then come back up through A minor scale. But it sounds like he kind of extends it at the very end. So he gets to that. This seventh fret. So you make it back up. And it sounds like he kind of keeps going like this. So kind of um, seventh fret there on the D to the fifth fret, back to that seventh fret, back to the fifth on the G, and then seven five seven into the uh, um, the ninth fret there on the G. So kind of like. He ends there. Now he does a bend here. A uh, whole step bend there at the ninth fret there on the G. And then we have a series of a. He does some slides up the B string. So. And he does a bar dip between, before each one. So the actual notes he's sliding to is the. Um, Seventh fret there. You can do uh, whatever string you want. I can't really see him play the solo like he does on recording live. So where he's doing this exactly, who knows? But so seven, and then eleven, fifteen, and nineteen on the B. So while he's doing that, he's gonna do a little bar dive before each one and kind of scoop into each one. Fun stuff. All right, so that's basically the end of his solo. Um, so I'm going to now put this guitar back into tune, <laughs> and then <laughs> we'll keep going with the song. All right, so coming out of that solo, a Jeff Henneman solo, um, 
is uh, the chorus again. So the same chorus riff, the, the, the regular chorus riff. <laughs> that kind of extended uh, beginning to it. So we got that, and then we get to probably my favorite riff of this, the song, probably a many people's favorite riff of the track. Um, I guess we can call it a bridge section. <laughs> uh, anyway, it sounds like this. All right, so that riff. Moves around quite quickly. So we have a lot of fourths going on here. So open low E string. Then you're gonna play the eighth fret on the um, A string and the D string together. Then go down to the seventh fret on the A and the D. So. So that's the pattern. We're just going to take those two fourth shapes and move it around a little bit. So we always have an open low E string, and then two fourths. So that's when they're on the eighth fret of um, the A and the D and the A and the E, uh, so the A and the D, and then the seventh to begin with. Then we have that open E again, and go down to the fourth shape now. The rest of them are going to be on the low E and the A string. So the sixth fret and five. So. Then the open E again, then 8, 7. So you're playing both of those strings, and then open E again, and then play 7, 6. So. Can't get more ominous than that. And then we have this. To, uh, so the first time through the riff, that little ending, it's three chords, it's always kind of a three chord ending there. We have this. So the first one is a power chord off three, five, six off the low E. So. Then we do the same riff again. Just a different ending. This time, instead of going three, five, six, we go three, six, different power chords to end it. So all together so far. All right, we'll keep going with the same riff again, just kind of a different ending again. So this ending now is going to go the power chord at six, four, three. One more time with the riff. And then take it down to the first power chord at the first fret hit twice. So that's the full riff. So basically you play through it uh, four times and you have a different ending each time. And as soon as you get to the end of that fourth inning, that's the riff, complete riff, one time through. And you're gonna repeat it again. So we have this. Repeat 
Hey. All right, then we get to a kind of an easier section. Let's listen to some of this. So if those chords look familiar, it's the same endings that we had in the previous riff, that little three, five, six, then three, six, four, then six, four, three, and then the, the low F power chord. It's the same endings just kind of hanging around a low, after you kind of chug on the low E chord, E power chord first. And then the first ending there, three, five, six, and then back to the E then, three, six, four, so same, same endings. Then six, four, three, and one. One, one, one. Then back to that really cool riff. And kind of hang out again. Same room. Okay, so at the end of this, I've played that riff a couple times. Basically, you want to think of this as there's a, a hit on an upbeat real quick. Uh, um, it's a pickup real quick, we'll say that, of the low E power chord. So just one by itself. And then there's four hits. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You do that eight times. So you basically want to think it's four hits eight times, but there's a one little uh, one hit pickup. So, come on. That kind of builds up, leads into uh, Kerry King's solo. All right, so um, we have for the solo, pretty simple rhythms that are going underneath here. So we're basically you're just going to be like, the first half of the solo, kind of keep that going. And then it goes into the chorus. Or Kind of, so you, you'll, you'll know what it is when you hear it. So it's basically you're just kind of the beginning of the solo when he's doing all this tapping. Kind of just chugging around on that low E and then we go into this, the, the, cor the same kind of riff that happened in the, in the, in the chorus. Alright, so now let me go through uh, Kerry King's solo for you real quick and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. Here we go. Fun stuff. So this solo is we can get note for note. It's pretty, um, it's pretty well put together there. So we have a. All right. So we're gonna be doing this kind of tapping pattern. We're gonna be tapping the eighth fret on the low E, and then the notes in the left hand at first are gonna be four. Four and five. So, so it's kind of a common tapping pattern. You're gonna tap the top note, pull off, then tap again. It's kind of a double tap. Then pull off to four. Open E. Hammer back up. And then we basically do the same pattern. We just change the notes that we're tapping. We're tapping here. By the way, I keep my pick here. Just kind of hold it with my middle finger if you're trying to figure out where my pick went. So we have um, seventh fret there on the um, low E string. Then five and three in the left hand with the 
the same pattern. Kind of, kind of pulling off the, the opening. So. And then we're going to move up to. Uh, so it's trying to like a, kind of a diminished type thing he's doing. Um, and he moves it up a three frets at a time, so that makes sense. So we have this tapping 10 fret, and he, the notes in the left are 7 and 4. So. So four times on it there. Then move everything up three frets. So this goes to 7, 10, and this goes to 13. A couple times there. And then move everything up three frets again. So this is 10 and 13, and this is 16. And then there's a little kind of a gap. It sounds like he might take the pattern across, but you can't hear it too well. Um, but I'm gonna maybe keep it the same pattern since he's kind of staying consistent with it. So after you've gotten here, Right here, just do it one time here. And then here you might do it, maybe tap this 15 and play 9 and 12 in this hand. So just do it real quick, but there's I'm not sure if that's it because there's kind of just a little bit of noise there. You can't really help tell what's going on. And then until he, you can hear it when he gets back to the pattern here, 15, 9, 12 on the uh, D string. What he does is... Kind of mess around those, kind of hold it, and then there's a hammer on between 10 from 10 to 9 there on the at the G to kind of start this next section, which is a picking lick. So you got to grab your pick again, and we have this. All right, so after you do that, you kind of hold on that G there. Just a simple uh, kind of a, a common picking sequence. We're going to start it though with a hammer on from 14 to 16 on the G, and then play this. 13 on the B, back to 16 on the G, back to 13. So that's the note, the, the pattern where you you play a note in the scale, go back one note, and then go back up. So it's a three note pattern. And then we basically move to the next note up in the scale, which is the 15th fret, and play that same pattern. So 15, then go back to the note right just lower to it, and then back to the previous note. So we have this. Then we keep doing that same pattern going up. So now we go up to the 17th fret and do the same thing. 17, 15, 17. Then up to 13 on the high E. Down to that 17. And then back up to the 13. Then 15, 13, 15 on the high E. And then 17, 15, 17. Into a bend. So we have. And that goes into some double stops, which looks like this. There's a quick little open high E in there. So those double stops are 15 on the G, I'm sorry, 17 on the G string, 18 on the B. So kind of tremolo pick those two strings, then take everything down one fret to 16 on the G, 17 on the B, then down two frets to 14 on the G, 15 on the B. And then 12 on the B, 13 on the G. Then that open high E string. And now we have this uh, little picky so we can sound like this. All right, so the first time you hear this played, it's he's, um, he's, he's doing... You might hear that G sharp, but it's the first time he plays it. He's playing G natural. So we have this. So you playing that 17 a few times. Kind of tremolo picking it. And then 
play 15, 13. And you kind of trim a little pick and even those 15s and 13s. So it doesn't mean you're hitting each note just once. You might, it's kind of like. So the melody these time in in the left hand by these tremolo picking in the right hand. So that first time you hear it is 17, 15, 13. Then we start going sharp in that G. So then we go 19, 17, 16. So same pattern, but 19, 17, 16 in the left hand. And then 16, 13, 12. And then he descends after a couple times. 15, 13, 12 on the B, over to uh, 14 on the G. So we have this. All right, and then he's going to end it with this uh, last kind of pentatonic lick and some unison bends. All right, so this is another common uh, pentatonic. So very uh, common lick. So it's based around E minor pentatonic. We're going to have. 15, it's the same lick we did before, by the way. So it's just based around a pentatonic here. So 15, 12, 15 on the low E. And then the next note up in the scale, 12 on the A string. So do that note, go down a pitch to the 15th fret there on the low E, back up to that A. And then 14, 12, 14 on the A. Heavily palm muted like I'm doing. And then over to 12 on the D, back to 14 on the A, and then back to that 12 on the D. Then 14, 12, 14 on the D, to 12 on the G, to 14 on the D, back to that 12. Kind of continue that same pattern. 14, 12, 14 on the G, and then over to 12 on the B, 14 on the G, and back to that 12. Cool stuff. So if you palm muted, that, that lick always sounds really killer. Um, so then we have uh, a unison bend. So you're holding the 12th fret on the high E string and bending up the note on the 15th fret on the B up a whole set. And then take that same thing up to this, the 17th fret with a 20 on the B. And up two more frets. The 19th fret and then a bend, a whole step bend of the 22nd fret on the high E string. All right, so after this, that solo, we have another riff. We're going back to the verse, but it's a little bit different in verse riffs, kind of a variation on it. Same rhythm, but just a little bit different thing going on in the left hand. So let's do this. So that's basically that same rhythm, but you're playing basically uh, the fourth intervals again. So you start here at the low E, I'm sorry, uh, the second fret there on the A and the D together. And then doing those 16 notes just on the low E string the whole time. So it's the same pattern. So it's that same feel. Except instead of doing, we're gonna do this. So the those the second fret on the uh, A and the D, and then the fifth fret on the A and the D. Then four, three, and between all that, you're gonna be doing those the instead of third fret, the low E open so we have.
All right, then from there we go back to the chorus, the full chorus, and then we have this ending, which is based off of um, the main riff again, the intro riff, sounds like this. All right, so that's that same riff up here to the same power chorus, and then back to the exact same thing again. So you don't do that. Just like this. And from there we have this one, two, three. Just hit open E power chords, and then um, just a quick first fret power chord, and then E power chord. So all together. All right, great track, great fun to play. Um, pretty intense though to get through it the whole way through. Uh, but if so, if you do, you know, you just build some muscle, you know, get the big biceps if you can get through it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.